Hey cousins, welcome back to my channel. I am glad you are here. And since you are here, go ahead and check out my Buy Me A Coffee. If you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one makeup tutorial, schedule some tutoring, or just buy me a tea, the choice is yours. Or you can just go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Now, let's get into the tea for the week. Let's start with Andrew Caldwell, honey. Mr. I am delivered himself. So on his Instagram, he posted a video of him actually beating up on some white guys. And the caption, it says, wow, just wow. I was at the red light and was attacked by two random white men who called me in words and all. I do not condone violence. However, when my life is in jeopardy, Drew Drew will come out. He said, baby, don't let him hurt you, okay? So, um, what shook me is that this guy has gospel music playing while he is beating up these dudes. So, I just wanted to start off with this. I thought this was hilarious. That's that fag dude that was working at the store. The one that was a gay and he. Oh, you can't. Right. 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 That's the fag dude that was working at the place, Kiki. The gay dude that was on the news in town. And not the. And he got the nerve to have church music playing. And you over here. <laughs> moving on let's get into k michelle baby i used to love her as an artist but baby now she is so miserable every other week she's coming out being so negative bringing up stuff that happened years ago and I'm just tired of it. Like, misery loves company. And you can't even focus on her talent because she just out here doing the most. She was caught on live going in on her assistant, I believe it was. Her name was Paris. And I know it was all over some money. I don't know the full details. I just know it was years ago. And I thought it was squash. Because I did have a fat in Paris. Oh, okay. That hefty thief. Please. How can you steal your credit card to ride an Uber and then get on TV and hit you about it? And you done put the on paid their mama rent. You done did all this to help a in the month of half hefty mother wanna get on TV and go against you. That ain't no loyalty. That ain't life. We all in here on brown liquor in our feelings. In our feelings. That ain't Comment down below if you think that K Michelle should just take a break from social media. If you watch Marriage Boot Camp, you know that Sahiri and Vado are a quote unquote couple on there. And after one of the exercises, Tahiri decides to chunk two apples at Vado's head one which looked like it actually hit his head and it looked like it hurt like apples are hard and later when Dr. Ish was talking to them Vado starts talking and she starts talking and Vado proceeds to choke her out or attempt to choke her out and you could tell this is probably something he's done before and I was having a debate with some people because some women believe that it is okay to beat up on men. And it is not okay on any end of the spectrum. You keep your hands to yourself, 
the other person keeps their hands to themselves. I think some women have the game so messed up. You cannot step to a man like you're a man and then get mad if he hits you back. Like, keep your hands to yourself. Because a lot of women will beat up on a man, beat up on a man, beat up on a man, until he just can't take it anymore. Like, he shouldn't have to be abused because you can't keep your anger together. So comment down below. I would love to hear y'all opinions on this. And I just threw this in here because it's crazy that a lot of women are like, no, he still shouldn't have. Well, he, I'm not saying that he should have did it, but saying that it's okay for her to be chunking stuff at him and he not do anything. Like keep all hands and feet objects to yourself. Next, we have Amanda Seals and she talks about why she left the real and kind of hints on that issue that black women are angry when we're speaking out and showing passion. She stated, I left the real because it was breaking my spirit. I was being asked to not talk about certain things that felt like a betrayal to my people and to me as a person. And then on top of that, I didn't want to be somewhere I felt like people weren't being honest with me, where people felt scared of me because of my black womanness. I did a smart, funny, and black game on the real, and I was so excited to get to play a smart, funny, and black game on the real. And they assigned it to the one white woman producer. But we have three black women producers and one black guy producer. So I was like, why are you producing this? And she said, oh, because so-and-so assigned it to me. And I said, but why would you be producing this? You're a white woman. You don't understand what we're going to be talking about. Now, she could have said, well, actually, I grew up in this culture, if that was the case. But I said to her, do you even know what we're going to be talking about? And she said, no, I just figured you were going to talk about it and I would just write it down. So I said, am I going to get a producer credit? Because to me, you assign the different segments to people who are going to be able to produce it to the best ability. And it's like if we're doing a segment on the Sabbath dinner, she was the one Jewish person on staff. She should be in charge of that segment because she has had the most experience on that. So comment down below if you've ever had to silence yourself in your workplace because you didn't want to be seen as the angry black woman. But here is the footage of Amanda talking about it on live. Yes. So like when I was talking about leaving the real, it was like I left the real because I really, it was breaking my spirit. Oof. Like in a- Why? How? I was being asked to not talk about certain things that I felt like that felt like a betrayal to my oh, people would be. and oh, to the yeah. person. Yeah. And, wow. And then on top of that, like, I just, I didn't want to be somewhere where I felt like I wasn't, people weren't being honest with me. You know, where people felt scared of me because of my black womanness. You know, like, I, I know as I say, this is going to end up on a blog, but um, I do a Smart, Funny, and Black game on The Real. And I was so excited to get to play a Smart, Funny, and Black game on The Real. And I was so excited to get to play a Smart, Funny, and Black game on The Real. And anybody who who hasn't isn't sure what Smart, Funny, and Black is about, we are going to be doing a Smart, Funny, and Black show tomorrow night um, on a virtual show. So make sure you get your tickets at smartfunnyandblack.com or the link in my bio. But we were playing a Smart, Funny, and Black show, on a game on The Real. And um, they assigned it to the one white woman producer. But we have three black women producers and one black guy producer. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why are you producing this? And she said, oh, because so-and-so assigned it to me. Wow. And I said, but why would you be producing this? You're a white woman. You don't understand what we're going to be talking about. Right. Now, she could have said, well, actually, I grew up in this culture, da, 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 if that was the case. Because I work with a producer named Jimmy Fox. He was another producer there who stepped in and was like, she was like, listen, we're going to work on it. And she 
proved my point because I'm new to this show. I need to work with somebody who knows the show because I know my show, Smart, Funny, and Black, and then you're going to help us put this together. And so, like, I couldn't stay in a place like that. Also, these trolls just used to come for me beyond comprehension. And they used right. to put me on the Reels page. And that was the part that was too much for me. Because it was like, that's like my work. It's like my space of work. And people are coming for me crazy. And they're not stopping it. And that Nobody was backed you. Nobody was on your side. Everyone was kind of like, did they kind of leave you? Was anybody, any of the staff, all of the girls on there going, hey, you know, sorry. Well, that's Lonnie, happened to you. Lonnie would definitely on Lonnie, Like Lonnie would a couple times on the show. She was like, leave Amanda alone. Stop. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. But like cool. the the but et cetera. Yeah. So that is where that difference came in. But when I said that to her, I said, you know, you don't do you even know what we're gonna be talking about? And she said, No. I just figured you were gonna talk about it and I would just write it down. Hmm. And I said, So am I gonna get a producer credit? Because to me, you assign the different segments to people who are going to be able to produce it to the best ability. And it's like, if we were doing a segment on like a Sabbath dinner, she was the one Jewish person on the production staff. She should be in charge of that segment because she has the most expertise on that. Period. And I just was like, and so basically she went crying to somebody and said that I attacked her. Even though I spoke to her. <laughs> the white girl move. Oh my oh. gosh. Black is king is a must see. I am not a stand for Beyonce, but I do respect her artistry. And she did the damn thing. I'm just hats off to her. I was in awe. The visuals of this film just blew my mind the references to african culture the time she put in it baby the ndas that the people had to sign because this stuff was filmed like a year and a half ago and to say you worked with beyonce and couldn't say nothing is a big deal this film was needed for black culture baby it had me going to watch the prince of egypt Last, but definitely not least, is my girl Tamar Braxton. I just wanted to come and give an update. I am not going to read this long statement that she put out. But in your own time, you definitely can. It was reported that WeTV and Tamar Braxton cut ties. Tamar Braxton took to social media or her Twitter and stated lies. No one has talked to a lawyer or to me since a flower or card text me or name this is the abuse and lies i'm talking about this is not helping my mental state they just won't stop until they see me out of my mind or dead since then this tweet has been deleted off of her twitter and so i'm wondering if they really did cut ties and she is free so after that, in more recent days, Tamar took to Instagram to make a really sweet post about her boyfriend or fiance, David, because in the media, it was portrayed that he was very controlling and he was part of the reason why she tried to end her life because he was not satisfied with the way that WeTV portrayed him in the upcoming trailer. So, sis came and put those rumors to rest. So, I'm going to play the audio to the video that is playing, and then I am going to come back and give you what she wrote under the caption. My love, where are we? How about we do a toast? A beautiful toast. Two different drinks with the same color. So, what? We're in Santa Barbara. We just had the most amazing engagement. <laughs> So we're celebrating. We're nice and quiet. We're having the best time of the world. Yes, the best time. Two of the best times. Wrote under the post, I came here just to say this and then I'm logging off. If you've ever been in recovery or treatment, 
You know that you reflect on a lot of things, but I couldn't let another day, another second go by without publicly thanking my love, David, for saving my life. I'm so grateful I was in our home lifeless and I'm sure finding me the way that you did couldn't have been easy. But know that people coming at you saying all crazy stuff isn't easy for me. People have called you every name in the book to deflect from what's really been going on. And you know that through this entire time, you have held my hand, heard my cries, held me when I've been weak. You have had my entire back. I will not allow anyone to call you controlling or that's that African man. Like, I don't have a mind of my own, because without this African man, I simply would not be here. Everything isn't political, and your love for me is not that. You were here for me when nobody was and still is. You and Logan are priority. Thank you for being my rock and now my angel on earth. I love you. And although I've been said yes in this old video, now and then, I couldn't imagine what life would be like if you weren't by my side. Thank God I'm here and thank God for you. Heart, exclamation point, ring. So is my sis engaged? Okay, cousins, again, thank you so much for watching. And comment down below if you know of any program app where you can submit stories anonymously. I want to start doing story times, but I want them to be anonymous so people can be super candid. And I think that will be really fun. And also, don't forget to comment and let me know what do y'all want to talk about in the upcoming week.